Hi everybody and welcome to the first easy lesson of term 2. This term, what we're going to be learning about when it comes to our actual Hizi content is going to be Ancient Egypt. So next lesson we're going to start breaking down all of the different features of Ancient Egypt, who the people were, how they lived and some of the different features of their society. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at one of the skills surrounding our Hizi classes. I'm going to give you guys the heads up. I'm practicing myself some of this video learning. So I've got a TV screen behind me showing what's being recorded. My computer screen is showing what you're seeing and the camera in front of me. So if I'm looking off in a couple of different directions, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to get the hang of everything and learn the best way to help teach you guys while you're at home. So the way I like to start off a lot of my lessons, we have our learning intentions and our success criteria. Our learning intentions are some of the things that we should be able to do by the end of the lesson. What we're looking at today is a little bit difficult. So if you don't pick it up and in the first time we go through it, that's okay. This is a really hard thing to understand. So if you don't get it straight away, we're going to practice it a couple of times. So by the end of the lesson, Hopefully you can first understand what a timeline is. No, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to highlight all of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully first you can understand what a timeline is. We're going to be looking this lesson at what a time, what is a timeline. We're going to be breaking down all of the different features of a timeline. And we're going to be looking at how we can prepare our own timeline. So first, I can understand what a timeline is. The key word there is our what. What? I have no idea what I just did. I meant to make a bold. There we go. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger for you guys. There we go. I can understand what a timeline is. Second, I can organize events in order in the order of time. I can organize events in the order of time. And what that means is I can put things in order of when they happened. So we're going to practice writing up our own timeline, but we're going to use a couple of different things to practice that. So if we're looking at a story, we're going to make sure that we put what happened first, first. What happened last goes last. And everything in between goes in order. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. And the last one is I can practice using a timeline. Now you guys might have seen that I've used the word practice. The first time we do something is always the worst time we do something. I expect, just like I did, for some of us to struggle a little bit with timelines. And when we're practicing it the first time, we're going to get better and better and better at using them. We might not be perfect by the end of this lesson. We might not be perfect by the end of the week, but we're going to keep practicing until we get so that we get a little bit better each time. Now our success criteria, how are we going to achieve our learning intentions? So first we have a bit of a discussion. I'm going to be talking about some timelines and we're going to be looking at some different examples of timelines. Then we're going to be planning our own timeline. We're going to be organizing our events and we're going to be using a timeline. We're going to practice with two different timelines. One I'm going to do with you guys on screen and the other one I'm going to give you guys all of the practice skills so that you can do it at home. So first, what is a timeline? If we look at a day, a clock is kind of a timeline. It's just a timeline that starts at 12, if you can see my mouse cursor over here, starts at 12 and works its way around. This line is in the shape of a circle and it never really ends because it's always counting the time as it's going forward. So if we're looking at our own timeline of a day in the morning at 5 o'clock, I wake up, I don't know about you guys, but I like to wake up nice and early at 
5.30. I like to have my breakfast. At 7 o'clock, I've started... No, sorry, at 6 o'clock, I've started my drive to school. And by 7 o'clock, I'm at school getting ready for my day. And then we know that... I, I always struggle with the bell times, but we know that we have break time around here. Then as our day goes through, we come close to 3 o'clock and there's our home time. And then at 5 o'clock, we might have a... Or 4 o'clock, we might have a snack. 6 o'clock, we might have dinner. So that when it comes to 9 o'clock, we're getting ready for bed. So that we can start the day all over again. So I've just organized what I normally do in a day in a circle timeline. So when we're looking at what is a timeline, it's just a different way that we can measure what hap that we can measure time and look at what happens in that time. So when we're looking at timelines, while clocks measure seconds, minutes and hours, timelines usually measure years, months, or days. They can also measure smaller bits of time, but that comes down to how much detail we want to put into it. If we're looking at really, really old societies, we're probably going to be looking at years, because we're looking at time frames of hundreds or tens of thousands of years. So we have our first example of a timeline just here. So this is a timeline of all of the different social media platforms. In 2002, LinkedIn was made. 2004, Facebook. 5, YouTube. 6, Twitter. 7, Tumblr. 10, Instagram. And 10, Pinterest. So we can see the way that all of these things were spread out. We have all of the years in order, 2002, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2010. So this is a measure of time in a line. We have our starting point of 2002 and our ending point of 2010. Now our next timeline is breaking something down in a much smaller time frame. We're not looking at 10 years. We're looking at, if we have a look on our side over here, seven weeks. That is a little bit small. I tried to make it bigger and I think I made it smaller. All right, that's as big as I can make it, but we have seven weeks over here. We have step one, step two, step three, and all of the different steps in order of when they're planned to happen. This is a vertical timeline. So if we can look at two different ways, the two that we looked at before go sideways in a line. And the sideways line tell is a horizontal line. So these are horizontal timelines. This one is a vertical timeline. The way that they've started this vertical timeline is at the top we have the oldest event and in 2010. And at the bottom, we have the most recent event or the newest event in 2017. So in 2010, Mike and Kevin launched an app. This is about Instagram. 2011, Instagram had 1 million users. 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. So we can see that in our timeline, we need to make sure that we're putting down all of our important events in the order that they happened. So if we're looking at your timeline, your timeline shouldn't say that I wrote an essay first, then I learned how to write because you have to learn how to write before you can write your essay. Or it shouldn't say that I, I did, um, the, I, I, What's it called? Bicycle. I had a bicycle race and I won my first bike race. And then five years after that, I learned how to ride a bike. Because it doesn't work in that order. We have to learn how to do something before we can win a race in it. So we need to make sure that all of our events are in order of when they happened. Now I'm going to ask you guys to write down what happened yesterday. 
if we're looking at what happened yesterday, we always start from the beginning of the day and we start retracing our steps. Like we saw when I was having a look at the clock, I always start at when I first wake up and then go through my day in order. When we're organizing our timeline, we need to make sure that as we're doing this, we're writing down all of the events in the proper order that they happened. With a proper timeline, and we're not going to be too strict on this just for the moment, but we can see that on this one here, the different gaps between all of the lines are the exact same length. Sorry, the different gaps on the line between the events are the same length. And that's because here, each gap, which is roughly one centimeter, is measuring one year. We have 2010, one year, 2011, one year, 2012, one year, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now, if we removed one of these, the gap would be twice as long because we're measuring two years. So the gap needs to be bigger. So when I'm doing my timelines, I like to have each one centimeter equal to one year so that that way I know that all of my lines are going to be the same. Or if we're looking at a big difference in time, if we're looking at ancient Egypt, we might even make it 10 years or 100 years per each centimeter. Understanding that each gap has to measure the exact same amount of time. I think that was the most important one I wanted to show you because right now we're going to have a turn of practicing making our own vertical timeline. Now before we start with so I'm trying to get my mouse onto the other screen so that I can move my notes down. Thank you. Before we can start planning our own timeline, we need to plan out what we're saying. So first, I thought I'd pick a story that hopefully we all know. The story that I've chosen for today is Little Red Riding Hood. And I've little red writing hood. Copy. Awesome. So we're going to plan out the story of little red riding hood. Some of the details I might not get exactly right. So I do apologize. I'm trying my best to remember the story. You have to remember I'm old, got no hair and the hair I do have is really gray. So if I get some of the details wrong, I'm really sorry. So first what happened right in the beginning of little red riding hood? Little Red Riding Hood baked food for grandma. The first thing she uh, that happens in the story is we know that Little Red Riding Hood is making food for her grandma. From memory it's because grandma's a little bit sick and Little Red Riding Hood is preparing some food to take when she goes to visit grandma. So after she bakes some food for grandma, she leaves home to get to grandma's house. So next Little Red Riding Hood leaves her house to get to her grandmother's house. She doesn't leave home and then bake the food. We need to make sure that's in order. So first she bakes the food, then she leaves home to see grandma. Next she walked through the woods. Then um, the wolf hides grandma. In some of the stories, I think the wolf eats grandma. I'm not entirely sure which one is the correct story. So we're going to go with hides grandma because I like grandma. I don't want her to get eaten straight away. Then we have Little Red Riding Hood got to grandma's house. If my spelling's a bit off, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to work on a couple of different screens. Please forgive me. So next we have Little Red Riding Hood got to grandma's house. Wolf tries to eat Little Red Riding Hood. Huntsman saves Little Red Riding Hood. So the first thing that we need to do is ask ourselves, are all of these events in order? Are they all in the right order of when they happened? 
So first we have Little Red Riding Hood bakes food for Grandma. Then we have, I should put Little Red Riding Hood here. Little Red Riding Hood leaves home to get to Grandma's house. Little Red Riding Hood walk through the woods. The wolf hides Grandma. Little Red Riding Hood got to Grandma's house. The wolf tries to eat Little Red Riding Hood. And the huntsman saves Little Red Riding Hood. So are all of our events in order? I think so. If I'm a little bit wrong, I'm really sorry. So now I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to put that there and put this green here. Now, in your workbooks, we're going to practice putting all of these different things on our timeline. So, I would like if everyone could open up your workbooks, write the heading of Timeline. If my writing's a bit messy, I'm sorry, I'm trying to write on a vertical screen. And I just thought that I should probably lay it flat. So we're going to use our heading of timeline. I'm going to try and write that a little bit neater. So our heading is timeline. And our subheading is little red writing hood. Next, I would like everyone at home to rule a straight line down the side of your page. So if you have a look on my screen, so I'm just trying to organize everything, there we go. If you have a look on my screen, I've got this ruler coming down the side of my page. And I've ruled my straight line, I probably shouldn't do it in black, because I'm doing my writing in black. So we're going to pick green. So there I've got my green timeline. I'm going to go back to black for my writing. Now we're going to practice putting our order, our events in order. We're going to give some different times for when these things might have happened. So what time do you think Little Red Riding Hood might have baked the food for Grandma? I'm going to say that at 7 o'clock, Little Red Riding Hood baked food for grandma. Now the times for this story might not be the real times that it would take things to happen. We're trying to make, we're trying to give this story a little bit of, of extra features to help it fit with what we're looking at. So at seven o'clock, Little Red Riding Hood baked food for grandma. Then next we have Little Red Riding Hood leaves home to get to Grandma's house. So if she's baking food, she might leave home at about... If anyone knows me, I'm not very good in the kitchen, so I'm going to guess 8 o'clock. We're going to say that Little Red Riding Hood baked all of the food and then left Mum to do all of the cleaning because she's not very nice. <laughs> so next we have Little Red Riding Hood left home to get to grandma's house. Now if we have a look at this gap here, that's about one centimeter. I've tried to leave a one centimeter gap because we need to remember that all of the different gaps in time need to be the same. So every hour on my timeline is going to be about one every sorry every centimeter is going to be about one hour so try as you're doing your timeline to make sure that all of the gaps for all of the hours are the same so next we have little red riding hood is walking through the woods so let's say it takes about an hour to get to the woods so then we have again a similar gap and then nine o'clock 
Little Red Riding Hood, walks through the woods. Okay. Now, the wolf knows that Little Red Riding Hood is coming, so he's going to try and hide Grandma. Does he know as soon as she gets to the woods, or does he know a little bit later? I'm going to say that about 9.30, so about half of the gap on the other ones, so not as big, 9.30. Wolf hides Grandma. And there we can see that the gap here is about half the size of the gap here. Because it's not a full hour, it's only half an hour. Now, how long does it take Little Red Riding Hood to get to Grandma's house? I'm going to say it takes about three hours from nine o'clock. So we know that 10 o'clock is going to be here, 10, 11, 12. Going to say that Little Red Riding Hood got to Grandma's house. I'm sorry if my writing's a little bit small. It's hard to see how big this is going to turn out when it makes its way over to um, into the video. I'm trying to write it in a way where we can see everything that's going on and it's not taking up too much space. So there we have 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and 11 to 12, all about the same gap. Hopefully at home you guys are using your ruler to measure the different gaps. It's hard for me to measure on my computer, so I'm hoping that you guys are taking an extra step that I'm not. <laughs> now. Little Red Riding Hood got to Grandma's house, she's outside, she's organizing all of her different things, she's unpacking her basket, getting all of the food ready so that it looks nice, working on her presentation. And then by the time she gets inside and the wolf uncovers himself and says, oh, what pretty eyes you have and what, what big ears you have and what big teeth you have. So in another hour, because we've got a bit of a patient wolf, Wolf tries to eat Little Red Riding Hood. And then if the wolf is chasing Little Red Riding Hood, they're causing a lot of noise because she's running and screaming, Ah, wolf, wolf! We know that the huntsman saves Little Red Riding Hood, but it doesn't happen straight away because he needs to come from wherever he is. So at about... 110, so very close to 1, I'm going to put 110, we're going to put a little bit of an arrow so that we have some room to write. We're going to write Huntsman saves Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma. So there we have our first timeline. The first timeline that we've drawn out, and the first one that we've based on Little Red Riding Hood. If you need a little bit of extra time to copy down this timeline, feel free to pause the video here. You can pause the video whenever you get stuck, or whenever you need a little bit of extra time to catch up. So you can pause the video here, and copy down any extra things that you missed out from our Little Red Riding Hood timeline because we're just about to move on to the next part, so I'm going to move my screen up right about now. Okay, so... We've done our Little Red Riding Hood timeline. This one I'm going to do in red. Is it going to... Oh no, that's... So every now and then my... thing takes a little bit of a break. Okay, we're going to take a new one, I'm going to set it to 90 degrees, so it's a right angle, I'm going to bring it up in red, boom, boom, boom. 
This time I'm going to draw some lines on the side so that I can keep track of all of the different years. And I probably should have done this the first time, but I'm using the measurements on the side of this ruler here. If my pen will write, that would be amazing. Okay, my pen isn't writing on the side of my screen for some strange reason. Okay, so I have to do it this way and I'm very sorry. So for this one, I'm not using <laughs> my ruler isn't giving me actual proper measurements. I'm having to start all the way on the outside. So some of my measurements might not be entirely accurate. Your ruler will let you write wherever you decide to write from. It won't disallow you from writing on the edge of the ruler. So for all of these, I'm going to count each one of these lines as one year. Now I'm going to have a lot more years than a lot of you guys at home. And that's because I'm really old. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to list all of the different years. So one, two, three, not one, two, three. So we're going to start with the year that we were born. I'm not going to put the actual year that I was born. I'm going to change the year just a little bit. So I'm going to write 1980. Six, nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty eight, nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety one, nineteen ninety two, nineteen ninety three, nineteen ninety four, nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety seven. 1999, Thirteen, fourteen. So that's my timeline up to the year 2014. Now, my computer blocked off some of the different things that I could do. Hopefully yours isn't doing the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to plan out some of the different things that we can put into our timeline. So the year that you were born, when you learnt something I'm gonna leave that open there you might have learned how to play the guitar learned how to ride a bike learn how to do something really exciting when you started school um, I want you to find some I'm gonna make so these three one two three and I want five more really exciting things that happened in your life. And we're going to put them on our timeline. So for me, 1986, I was born. And you can even put the month, and if you'd like, the day that you were born. Now, I know that I started school when I was about five. So I can count 1986, 87, 88, 89, 90. So in about 1990, I started school. Then if I go to 1993, my sister was born. 
1996, I learnt to ride a bike. So what I would love to see from all of you guys at home, and it's going to be our last activity for today, in your timeline, the first event should be the year that you were born. I know that you guys weren't born in 1986 because then you'd all be as old as me. So it should start with the year that you were born and it should make its way all the way down till today, till this year. And if you get stuck, I'm going to let you know that the year is 2020. So we're going to write down our timeline starting from the year that you were born all the way down to 2020. Every year should have the same measurement. You could say one centimeter for each year. Once you've organized your timeline, it should have five events in the timeline. I want these written out. What I would love for you guys to do is to have these written out Take a picture of your work and send it through to the Google Classroom. So submit the work as completed so that I can see it and I can see that you understand what's happening. And then that will give us the chance to organize what's happening the, um, the next time that we have review our timelines. So let's come back up and let's have a look at what we did this lesson. So first we had our discussion on what a timeline is. We looked at some of the different images and we had a look at the way that we can plan our timelines. Then we planned our timeline looking at the story of Little Red Riding Hood. We drew everything out. We organized all of the different years. We organized our events by writing them out first and then making sure that we could change any that weren't in the right order. And then we used our timeline with Little Red Riding Hood and you guys have the opportunity to use it now for our um, closing activity to plan out your own timeline. So, if you need to flick back to any point of this video, anything that you weren't sure of, you have every um, ability to do that. So flick through, rewind, go back to any part that you got stuck on. What I would love to see next lesson is that your timeline is finished and complete. I want to see that done and I want to see that submitted onto the Google Classroom. So hopefully by now you understand what a timeline is. I hope that you can organize your events and put them in order of when they happened. And now we're having our practice of our timeline. So thank you for watching. Please feel free to email me or any of your other teachers or contact us through the Google Classroom. I wish you the best of luck with this activity and I'll see you next time.